Hi, I'm Emma. And I am Caleb. And, and we, we have, have an important, important message for you today. During this time of pandemic, many are suffering. Some have lost jobs. Others are going hungry. Many people are stressed. And many are wondering, what is going to happen next? We want to tell you today, you don't need to be stressed. Because the Bible says, God can give us perfect peace. If we heal our mind on Him. Isaiah 26 verse 3. You don't need to be stressed out. This just tells us that Jesus is coming very soon. And He's going to take us home to heaven. Where there will be no more pain. No more hunger. No more tears. No more stress. No more pandemic. We will all be happy and healthy there. God will change us. And God will create a new world. Do you believe it? You have to have faith to see it. Faith in God's Bible. That's where it tells us all this good news. So don't let this pandemic make you forget about Jesus. I lose sight of Him. Instead, let it bring you closer to Him. Read your Bible more. Pray more. We can have confidence in the Bible. Claim to God's promises. The Bible says in Psalms 91, 6 and 7, that when the pestilence comes, and a thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, it won't come near you. Isn't God promises sweet? That's a promise for our time. And if God promised it, I have faith that He will do it. He never breaks His promises. Because He is God. And God will never let us down. So today, we want to remind you, Jesus is coming very, very soon. Yes, very soon. And we must be ready. Ready to meet Him. Ready at His second coming. Ready today. But how? The Bible says in Matthew 24, 42, Therefore keep watch. Because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. We must watch. Watch for the signs. Like this pestilence. Yes, this pandemic. It is a sign. Yes, a sign to get ready. So if you have been watching and you realize that Jesus is telling us to get ready because he's coming soon, then we must build our faith. Because the Bible says that faith is the victory. First John 5, 4. And we are saved by grace through faith. Ephesians 2, 8. How do we build our faith? We must spend time in the Bible. Romans 10, 17. Since we have been in lockdown, we've been staying home a lot. But because of that, I've read my Bible more. We've finished the New Testament already. One chapter a day. Keeps the devil away. Why don't you read the Bible with us today? Let's build our faith. Because faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Let's do it every day. So we can be ready for Jesus today. And then we don't have to be afraid. This is the peace that we can have. That rides above the storm. God bless you and see you next time. That was a beautiful video from those little young people. Can we give them some praise? Amen. It is prayer time in the building. And after that, I just want to continue to um, pray for our youth because clearly there are some people teaching their kids the right way to praise God. First thing in the morning on Sundays, that is just amazing. Um, but we want to give God some prayer. So I ask that you will close your eyes and um, pray with me as I start this morning. God, we want to come to you thanking you for waking us up this morning. God, we want to thank you, God, for allowing us to see another day, for allowing us to be able to come to see you one more time, for allowing us to be able to see each other one more time. God, I thank you for allowing us to be safe inside of this pandemic, God. Even going on the roads, God, for allowing us to make it here safely, God. Anything could have happened between a few hours ago and right now, God, but you decided to keep us, and I thank you, God, for having enough mercy and grace to keep us and to watch over us. God, I thank you for keeping us over last night, God. Anything could have happened. There could have been a burglar there could have been another earthquake God you could have came and we wouldn't have been here God but I thank you God that you allowed us to see another day God 
I thank you, God, for keeping our youth, God, in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you for allowing our youth to be in here, God, in the name of Jesus. When we could be anywhere else, God, I thank you for allowing our parents to teach us the right way to come to church, God, in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you for allowing us just to be here, God, when there are so many people, God, that are out there doing drugs, God, that are having alcohol, God, in the name of Jesus, that are producing kids that they won't take care of, God, and I thank you that we are here right now, God, preaching, God, that we are, that there are so many kids, God, that are screaming your name to all the people to hear, God, and I thank you, God, for all the people that are teaching them, God, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you for your protection, God, over this church, God, over your youth, God, over these parents, God, over all the men and women that you've called, God, I thank you, God, for protecting us, God, for not letting us have to sit and be depressed and worried about the pandemic, God, but that you allowed us to have a peace, God, because we are covered by your blood, God, in the name of Jesus, God, and I thank you for your blood. God, I thank you that after all these years, God, after all the years in the Bible, God, that your blood still works, God, today in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you that you are continuing to watch over us, God. God, even when we are unfaithful, God, even when we don't read our Bible the way we're supposed to, God, God, even though we don't trust you like we should, God, that you keep us in your hand, God, in the name of Jesus, God, that you are shaping and molding us, God, in the name of Jesus, God, to do your will, God, and I pray that your will be done today, God. God, I pray that you will heal, deliver, and set free today, God, in the name of Jesus, God. I thank you for all that you've been doing, God, over these past few weeks in every church service, God. God, that there is a new revelation, that there is a new word, that there is a new prophecy every single service, God. And I pray that this will be our new normal, God. I pray that every single time we come, that we come expecting something new. We come expecting something great and marvelous to happen, God. I pray that there are more miracles and that the miracles will be our normal, God. God, that we don't need to go to church all the time, God, that we don't need to see each other's faces every day, but that miracles will be our normal, God. Even if coming to church isn't our normal, God. God, even if going to restaurants and, and seeing our friends and family across states, God, isn't normal anymore, God, that you will be our normal, God. In the name of Jesus, God, that praying to you, God, that reading our Bible and worshiping wholeheartedly will be our new normal, God. In the name of Jesus, God. God, that witnessing to people and bringing them closer to you will be our new normal, God. In the name of Jesus, God, that normal will not even have the same meaning to us anymore, God. In the name of Jesus, God, that we will start to see more youth, God. In the name of Jesus, God, that we will start to see older generations, God, break out of their shells, God. In the name of Jesus, God, that people who sat down all the time will start to stand up, God. will start to praise your name, God. God, will start to be healed and delivered and set free, God. That you will mend hearts, God. That you will show our churches, God. Show our people, God. Show this nation how how much you love them and that will be the new normal God that we will feel your everlasting love God in the name of Jesus God that we will share your everlasting love in the name of Jesus God we thank you God for keeping us God if nothing else God we thank you for keeping us and for allowing us to open our eyes this morning God in the name of Jesus God God, I thank you, God, for allowing us just to open our eyes, God, for allowing us to be able to move, God, for allowing us to be able to breathe, God, when there are so many people dying every second, God, in the name of Jesus, God, for allowing us to see our family, God, when there are so many death angels, God, in the name of Jesus that are in this nation, God, for allowing us to see our family, to see our kids, God, to see our husbands and wives, though they get on our nerves sometimes, God, I thank you that we are able to see them, God, I thank you that we were able to to have at least the breath to talk things out, God, in the name of Jesus, God. God, I thank you for keeping us, God, with all the killing and the murder, God, in the name of Jesus, God, that you have decided to keep us, God. God, though we are not worthy, though we don't deserve anything, for keeping us, God, in the name of Jesus, God, in the name of Jesus, God. God, for keeping my family, God, for keeping us in peace, God, in the name of Jesus, God. When the devil is trying to have us all to and from and have us all stressed out and depressed, God, for allowing us to hear simple messages, God, to hear encouragements that we don't have to be afraid, God, God, that we don't have to be depressed, God, that we don't have to be angry and frustrated at the world, God, we don't have to be angry and frustrated at the policemen, God, we can pray for the policemen, God, in the name of Jesus, God, we can pray instead of protesting, God, in the name of Jesus, God, that you allow us to have the fruit of our lips, God, in the name of Jesus, God. God, and we pray, God, in the name of Jesus, God, that you will continue to work through us, God, in the name of Jesus, God, that we will not pray for a change, God, but that you will help us to be a change, God, in the name of Jesus, God, that this new season, God, will be a blessing for everyone, including us, God, in the name of Jesus, God, that we will no longer continue to pray for people and see change in other people, God, but that we will see change in us, God, in the name of Jesus, God, that we will see blessings and miracles in us, God, in our lives and in our families, God, in the name of Jesus, God, and that as we pray for the name 
nation, God, that we will see miracle signs and wonders, God. We will see healing and delivering and setting free and Holy Ghost filled people, God, in the name of Jesus, God. God, that we will start to see more miracles in the church, God. God, that we will see miraculous healing, God. God, that we will see lives completely changed, God, that we will see people broken from their addictions, God, in the name of Jesus, God. And right now we pray against all the drug houses, God. We pray against all the weed shops, God. We pray against all the liquor stores, God, in the name of Jesus, that are trying to hold your kids captive in the name of Jesus, God. God, we pray that you will break through break them free, God, in the name of Jesus, God, that you will break the chains, God. God, that you won't let their past affect their future, God, in the name of Jesus, God. God, that you will watch over the minds of your people, God, in the name of Jesus. God, they won't turn from you, God, in the name of Jesus, God, but that they will turn towards you in these hours of need, God, in the name of Jesus. God, in the name of Jesus, that you will have your will today, God. God, that you will have your will every day, God, that we will not harden our hearts, God, in the name of Jesus, but that we will let your will be done in our lives, God, that we won't fear anymore, God, that we won't be afraid, that we won't be shy, God, but that we will scream your name to the rooftops, God, in the name of Jesus, God, that we will go on the mountaintops and scream your name until the people decide to change, God, in the name of Jesus, God. And we ask these things, God, in the name of Jesus, God. God, that you will continue to watch over your people, God, as they do your will, God, in the name of Jesus, God. That you will keep your hedge of protection over us, God, in the name of Jesus, God. That you will watch over your people's minds, God, in the name of Jesus, God. And we thank you that we haven't lost our minds yet, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Through all that we've been through, we thank you that we haven't lost our minds yet, God. We, we thank you that we're still trusting people, God, that we're still trusting you when we could have been gone. In the name of Jesus, we could have been lost. We could have been just dead. God, spiritually dead. God, we could have been emotionally dead, God, but we're here right now, and I thank you, Jesus. God, we pray that you let, you let your will be done today, God. God, that your presence will be in the midst, God, in the name of Jesus, God. God, that we won't forget about you in these times, God, but that we will focus on the word, God. God, that we will remember the promises and the prophecies, God, that we will focus on you, God, in the name of Jesus, when there are so many distractions, God that we will focus on you instead of the TV, that we will focus on you instead of the news, God, that we will focus on you instead of the gun violence, God, in the name of Jesus, God, that we will focus on you instead of the police brutality, God, in the name of Jesus, God, that we will turn to you, God, in our hours of need, God, in the name of Jesus, God. And we pray these things and we believe you for them, God, in the name of Jesus, God. And we are expecting these things in the name of Jesus, God. So continue to watch over us and keep us, God. Watch over this service, God, in the name of Jesus, God, that you will do miraculous things. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Can we stand to our feet and give God some praise on today? Hallelujah. The name of Jesus is the only name by which we can be saved. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus is the only name that heals. It's the only thing that delivers. It's the only thing that sets free. Hallelujah. So that's why we love to call your great name, God. We call your great name when we're down. We call your name when there's problems, Jesus. We call your name to heal our family, Jesus. We call your name when we need deliverance, Jesus. All we have to say is Jesus. Hallelujah. There's nothing more powerful than the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. And we praise you today. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus, hallelujah, God. Oh, yes, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Yes, Jesus. We love to yes. call your name. Here's something we cannot explain that happens when we proclaim your great name. Your great name. We love to yes, call your name. It's something we cannot explain that happens when we proclaim your great name. Your grace say we love. We love to call your name. Call your it's name. It's something we cannot explain. We cannot that explain that happens when we proclaim. When we proclaim. Proclaim your 
your great name. Call your name. It's something, it's something we cannot explain. We cannot that explain. That happens when we proclaim. When we proclaim your great name. 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 Jesus. Call your name. It's something, it's something we cannot explain. We cannot explain. Your name. Yeah. And there is power in the name of Jesus. Yeah. So much power in your name. Help us sing. There is power. There is power in the name of Jesus. So much power. Power in the name. Oh, there is power. There is power in the name of Jesus. So much power. Power in the name. Power in the name of Jesus. So much power. Power in the name. Say when I call your name. When I call your name. Say when I call your name. When I call your name. Say when I call your name. When I call your name. Call on the name of Jesus. He's a strong 
Hallelujah. All right, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord today. We give honor to God. Amen. Thank you, praise team. Amen. Blessings to everyone who's here today. We're going to get into the word of the Lord because you may not be on a time schedule, but I am. I have two preaching assignments today, and I want to make sure I say all that the Lord wants me to say. Um, and so we're going to make haste through this. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Go ahead, turn your Bibles to John chapter 1. Hallelujah. We give honor to God for our bishop and our elect lady, Bishop Eugene McCray and Lady Linda McCray. Let's bless God for our senior pastors. Hallelujah. I heard about three hand claps. Let's try that again. Let's bless God for our senior pastors. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name. Let's pray and then we're going to read our scripture. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we give you glory, honor, and praise, God. For this is the day that you have made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. There is nobody like you, God. No one above you. No one can dethrone you. No one can outpower you. You are the mighty God. The everlasting Father. And the Prince of Peace, wonderful counselor. Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus for the, another opportunity to be in your house. Your word said that when we come to the house of the Lord, come ready to hear and not bring sacrifices of fools. So, God, I pray that our ears are open to what heaven will say to us today. I pray that our hearts will respond to the word of the Lord. Thank you for the singing, thank you for the music, but it's by your word that we live. And so, Lord, I pray today that this word will fall on good and ready ground. Somebody need a word before they go back home today. There is a marriage that is broken. They need a word. There are children that's on drugs and alcohol and in the wrong relationship. They need a word. There's a business owner. They need a word. So, Father, send your word. For your word declares that you sent your word to heal and to deliver out of our destructions. So I pray today, even before the altar call, that someone will get a revelation and the an answer to their life's problem. I pray for every unbeliever in this place today. That by the end of this message, you will turn their hearts towards you. Stony hearts will be broken. Father, I thank you right now because the church is in its greatest season. Regardless of what's going on in our nation, regardless of what's going on in our government, regardless of what's going on with medical, God, or on social media, you said in your word you're coming back for a glorious church without spot or wrinkle, and you are preparing us for your return. God, we're not coming asking for a house. We're not coming asking for a car. We're not coming asking for more money. We need a move of God. So, Father, I pray against every spirit. I pray against every spectating spirit. I pray against every opposing spirit. I pray against every witch and warlock. I pray against, we take authority over this atmosphere right now in the name of Jesus. That whatever the enemy is trying to do, it stops now. For where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And I command every captive to be free today in the name of Jesus. I speak freedom over every mind. I speak freedom over every heart. I speak freedom over everybody. Where there's sickness, where there's cancer, where there's tumor, it dries up under this, under this atmosphere. Under this atmosphere. Hmm. Father, I pray today that while a parent is worshiping in this place, that you are going out to the streets or wherever their sons and their daughter is and you are arresting them in the Holy Ghost and you are bringing them into the kingdom. I pray for that husband that's not living right. I pray for that wife that's not living right. I thank you because today you're going to break curses. You're going to go down the bloodline and you're going to do a spiritual blood transfusion. Father, I thank you right now because someone came bound. 
But Holy Spirit, you're going to set them free today. We humbly ask you to come in this room. Let your weight rest upon us. The weight of your glory. <laughs> the weight of your glory. And let it rest upon us. In the mighty name of Jesus. One more time. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands in this house. Oh, come on. Give God your best praise. Come on. Give God your best praise. Break the music. If you're expecting God to do something for you, give him a 30-second praise. If you're coming desperate for a move of God, I want you to take the next 30 seconds. Forget about yourself. Forget about who's next to you. And give God your best praise. Now, if that's all you got, you can be done. But if there's a little bit more inside of you, go ahead and take the next 30 seconds and push it out. Come on, respond to the presence of God. Come on, respond to the presence of God. Come on, get, your, get yourself out of your mind. You've got to tap into his presence. <laughs> oh, come on, 30 more seconds. Come on, 30 more seconds. I need a touch from the Lord. I need a move from God. If you don't praise God for yourself, praise him for your children. Because he's about to set your children free. He's about to save your spouse. Your entire household is getting ready to change in the next 30 minutes. There's about to be a miracle that's going to hit your life. There's about to be a healing that's going to hit your body. The devil thought he was going to do something. But what the devil meant for evil, God is turning around for your good. Come on, give God a turnaround praise. Come on, give God a turnaround praise. The next 30 minutes, something is shifting in my life. I'm going to leave out of here. Not the same way I came in. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I've been waiting long enough. It's time for a breakthrough. I've been waiting long enough. It's time for manifestation. And it happens today. I serve notice to the devil that this very second is your last second. You're getting out of our homes. You're getting out of our children. You're getting out of our marriage because we believe God. Glory to God. I, I, I'm telling you, I came loaded. I'm, 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 I'm loaded. I'm ready to preach in this house. I'm ready to prophesy. I'm ready to pray because God has given me a word for this house. And we're not going to let no flesh or no demons stop what God is going to say today. Glory to God. All right. Let's stand up for the reading of God's word to honor the word of the Lord. Now, I, I, I know people may not like when I say this. I don't really think God cares whether we sit down or stand up. What he cares is if you obey the word. So if you can't stand, sit down. And if you can't stand, stand up. But don't let that make you feel like you're dishonoring the word. You dishonor the word when you don't obey the word. Amen. So the, for those that want to rest to your feet, rest to your feet. For those that can't, please be seated. Just follow us along. I'm going to be reading out of the New King James Version. And so if you have that on your phone, your Celica phone, your Bible, I now, y'all, I'm not going to lie. I know I'm 30 years old, but I'm old school. I'm trying to get used to this technology Bible, but ain't, it just ain't, I can't do this. So I'm trying to do this. So I'm going to go back and forth for the old folks and for the young folks. Amen. First John chapter one, verse 43. How many of you know it don't take God long to move? I, I need the prayer warriors to be praying because I feel something stirring in my spirit. I feel something stirring in my spirit, y'all. The Bible says the following day Jesus wanted to go to Galilee and he found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida. And I probably pronounced that wrong, but it's all right. You learn on your own time. The city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, 
Basically, come see for yourself. Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, and he said to him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered and said to him, Rabbi, meaning teacher, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree. Do you believe? And this is the prophetic word for today. You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, most certainly I say to you hereafter, you shall see heaven open. You shall see heaven open. And the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Turn to Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 12. And this is not in our, um, uh, this not, is this not going to be on the board, so you, you should have your Bibles. If you don't have your Bibles, you're probably new to the faith, so that's all right. But if you're not new to the faith and you don't have your Bible, shame on you. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 12. The Lord will open to you his good treasure, the heavens, to give you the rain, sorry, to give the rain to your land in its season. Touch somebody and say, it's my season. Say, I'm expecting rain. Say, the heavens are getting ready to open over my life. Say, I'm getting ready to see something greater. Say it again. Say, it's my season. Say, I'm expecting rain. Say, heaven is getting ready to open over my life. I'm getting ready to see greater. Now, I know we're social distancing, but right now we're under the blood. I need you to find three people and say, it's my season and heaven is getting ready to open. Come on, it's my season and heaven is getting ready to open. This is my season and heaven is getting ready to open over my life. I'm getting ready to see something greater. I've been waiting for a long time, but my eyes is getting ready to see what God has promised me. My eyes is getting ready to see what God has spoken to me. My eyes is getting ready to see what I heard in my spirit because the heavens, the heavens are getting ready to open. Within the next 30 minutes, heaven is getting ready to open over my life. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Let's go through this quickly. If you're taking notes, you're going to want to take notes because I got five things that I got to leave with you today. We're going to get out of the way because, like I said, it's all right. We're just going to, don't worry about the screen. The screen not working, so. Our, our sermon today is you're about to see greater things. You're about to see greater things. There's a few things the Lord gave to me as I was in prayer and consecrating. First of all, I just want to thank God once again for our senior pastor, for Pastor Bishop McCray, for entrusting me with this assignment. I do not take it lightly when I stand before the people of God. And it was funny because um, I was talking to Brother Chris, my dear friend from Wasilla, and he asked me, he said, Chester, when the next time you're preaching? And I said, I don't know. I'm not on the schedule. And then we ran into each, each other in Fred Myers. And his pastor said, Chester, are you preaching on the 27th? I said, no. Then the next day, Donna came into the office, and she said, Bishop said you're preaching on the 27th. <laughs> I text Chris, Chris. I said, Chris, I guess I am preaching on the 27th. <laughs> and so uh, I was just, you know, honored when I got the call. And right when I got the call, or, or Donna came and told me, I started praying, and I said, Lord, I said, what, what do you want me to speak to your people? And, and Trish and I, we were praying and fasting and consecrating, and then the Lord dropped this in my spirit, John chapter 1, I started meditating on it, and he said, tell the people that the prophetic word, see, regardless of what's going on in the nation, you're about to see something greater. 
regardless of the present condition of your life, you're, you, you, listen, and this word is only activated by faith. If you hear, the Bible says, believe the Lord your God and you shall be established. Believe his prophet and you shall prosper. God is saying, listen, I, I don't have to pump and prime you today. Your faith is going to activate the reality of this word. So I want you to write this down if you're taking notes. The first thing is this. In this season, if I'm going to see heaven open, I must, number one, follow Jesus. In verse 43, the Bible says the following day Jesus wanted to go to Galilee and he found Philip and said to Philip, follow me. Let me say this. There's a few points I want to uh, elaborate on this. The benefits of following Jesus. Number one, when you follow Jesus, it is impossible to be captive by a lie. Some of y'all are living lies because you are failing to follow Jesus in a particular area of your life. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit, which is Christ living inside of us, he will lead us and guide us into all truth. You cannot tell me that you're following Jesus and believing a lie because there's something in your spirit that's going to kick up and say, this ain't right. So when I follow Jesus, I can't be captive. I can't be in bondage by a lie. Another thing is, watch this, and somebody need to hear this today. When I follow Jesus, I get a fresh start. Now, let's be honest. There's some of you in here today, you done jacked your life up. You got a whole bunch of chicken heads running after you. Deadbeat father, can't cook mother, credit just wrong, no money in the bank. Your, let's be honest. Your life is jacked up, and you, you, don't have, you don't have to tell us. We don't need to know, but God knows. And you know your life is not going the way it should be. You're in addiction, you're in stronghold, but God is saying today, you don't have to live this way. If you want to, see, that's the thing about following Jesus. If you want a fresh start, just follow him. Yeah. How do I know this? 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 says this, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things. Some of y'all need everything in your life to become new. Let me say that again. You need, every, you need God to go back 10 years and just make the whole thing new. You need your marriage refresh. You need your education. You, you done jack your How many of you been there where you know you jack your life up? I've been saved from the age of nine, and I just jacked some things up. And I'm saying, God, I knew better. But that's what the blood does. The blood comes and clean up our life. David put it like this. He said, goodness, grace, and mercy follows me, what? All the days of my life. Because God already knew we was going to make some mistakes. And God said, let me go save these crazy people from themselves or they self-destruct. So if you're sitting in this place today and you feel like your life is just broken, busted, and disgusted, and there's nothing else you can do and you need a fresh start, follow Jesus. Tell somebody to say, follow Jesus. The second thing is, the third thing is this, when you follow Jesus, you get clarity of your purpose on why you live and how to live right. John 8 and 12 says this, then Jesus spoke to them again saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness. You know the reason why you keep hitting a dead end in your life? Because you're not following Jesus. You wonder why your relationships keep not working out because you're not following Jesus. I told a young lady the other day, she said, Chester, I want you to meet my boyfriend. Because I think you're going to like him. I said, I doubt it. I said, because I could discern in my spirit right now that the brother ain't good. And so then I meet the brother, and sure enough, I didn't like him. And she said, well, I just think Jesus put him in my life. Jesus did not put him in your life when you leave Jesus. Because the blessing of the Lord makes the rich add no sorrow. You're not, you don't tell me God placed you in a relationship and then you leave God. Oh, Especially, I told, I told the young lady, I said, your boyfriend is the Antichrist. <laughs> that was a joke, but I was, because the brother don't want nothing to do with God. And so I told her, I said, there's no way that you're, you, you say Jesus put him there when you're walking in darkness, when he's teaching you everything that is anti-God. When you follow Jesus, he brings light and clarity to your life. Some of y'all are missing the reason why you're living because you're not following Jesus. See, Jesus gives you purpose. Not your relationship. Not your education background, educational background. 
not your political view. It's Jesus. You have not gained purpose and identity until you start following Jesus. The last thing when it comes to follow Jesus, when you follow Jesus, it validates your sonship. Just because you gave your life to Christ, it does not stop there. Romans 8 and 14 says this, for as many who are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And you have a lot of bastards in the kingdom because they're not allowing God to father them. I don't care if you got saved yesterday. If you're not being led by the Holy Ghost, God is not your daddy. You're a bastard. You know what a bastard is? A fatherless child. You have to not just accept him. You have to follow him. Meaning, watch this. God has to get all up in your grill. He has to be in every decision. Everything you, and see, that's why so many of us, and I've been there, that's why so many of us has messed up our life because, see, we wanted God in our finances, but we didn't want God in our relationship. We wanted God in our relationship, but we didn't want God to tell us what career path to take. And now we've been in this career path, and we're upset, and we feel like we have wasted our life because God said, if you would have just followed me, I would have told you you wasn't supposed to do this, you were supposed to do that. Am I making sense this morning? Touch your neighbor and say, follow Jesus. Okay, so that's the first thing. Uh, uh, Jesus tells Philip to follow me. So if you're going to see heaven open and greater things, you, you must rededicate your following to God. Some of you, get, you did good, but the Bible says what hindered you? You know, when you first got saved, you was the most fireball in the church. You ran around every Sunday without deodorant. Ushers had to keep picking you up from the altar. You cried, and, and people said, oh, she, and he just filled with the Holy Ghost. But then as you start walking a little bit more with God, you stop running after God. I believe that within the next couple of minutes, when we do altar calls, some of you just need to rededicate yourself to following him because you got off track. I'm telling you, I keep hearing this in the spirit. The reason why you keep hitting a dead end, the reason why you keep repeating the same cycles that make you upset, that make you feel just horrible, that make you feel less of who you really are in God, is because you stopped following Jesus. See, he didn't stop leading. You just stopped following Amen, somebody. Amen. Psalms 32 and 8 tells us to stop being stubborn and just follow him. It says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Do not be like the horse or the mule. Look at your neighbor and say, are you a horse or a mule? The Bible says, don't be like the horse or the mule, which have no understanding, which must be harnessed with a bit and a bridle, or else they would not come to you. Don't let God have to send something great, crazy in your life to get your attention. Just willingly say yes, Lord. Point number two, the danger of a preconceived opinion. John 146 says this in our text. Nathaniel said to Philip, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Now, when I studied this and I was studying biblical history, if you knew anything about Nazareth, Nazareth was such a bad city, they built a reputation. Nazareth was the ghetto. Nazareth was where all the jailbirds came out of. Nazareth is where all the young women got pregnant out of wedlock. Nazareth is where all the thieves was at. So Nazareth had this bad reputation, so when Philip told Nathaniel that the Messiah was coming out of Nazareth, uh, Nathaniel had to stop because he already had a pre preconceived opinion that, wait a minute, nothing good can come out of that. See, some of y'all family line is that. That's why some of your family can't believe that you're really saved because they say, can nothing come out of the Jones? Can, can nothing come out of the, wa wa uh, uh, the Wallies? But isn't it amazing, watch this, the darkest city, the most crazy city, the most corrupt city, where there was great darkness, God put the greatest light in. How mindful God is 
to where he says, I'm going to allow my son, who is the light of the world, to grow up in the darkest city where people say nothing's coming out of it. See, people have already judged your life because they know your family history. But they, what they don't know is you're carrying the light of the world inside of you. You're carrying greatness. And can anything good come out of Anchorage? That's why we can't put our mouth on Fairview and Mountain View. Because you don't know who God is raising up in there. Right now, there's a prostitute, but God's about to make her a prophetess. There's a pimp, but God's about to make him a preacher. God said, I will put my light in the darkest area. And this is the mistake. Watch this. This is the mistake. God said, and when I was praying about this, God said, warn the people that if you have preconceived opinions in this season, you will miss the move of God. And let me show you what God showed me. God said, this is a season where you're going to see a shifting in ministries. And watch this. Hear me, because I feel like a lot of people need to hear this today. If you judge God off of the way the te praise team sang, you'll miss the move of God. If you judge God off of the way the preacher preached, you'll miss the move of God. Well, they don't sing songs like Hillsong. <laughs> Elevation Church. I just can't get into it. The Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, not where the temple is right. I've heard people that sound like a dog singing. God used them because their heart was right when they were singing. Now, I don't like it because it hurt. Me. I, 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 I want you to be on note, on key, but I'm not God. So in this season, you have got to break your traditions, your religious traditions. God is not in a temple. He's not in a beat. He's not in a style of preaching. How do I know where God is? I line it up with the word. I tested by the spirit. And there's some of you, watch this. You're going to miss what God want to do in this season in your life because you're judging God by last season. You're judging God by the way he moved in mama church. You're judging God by the way you've been used to him. But God is doing a whole new thing. And if you're not careful, you're going to miss what he's doing. Nathaniel almost missed meeting the Messiah because he thought nothing good could come out of Nazareth. Some of us are guilty of this. We walk by people in the store, or we know of people, and because we know their history, we feel like God can't use them. But let's not forget your history. You're dirtier than them. The only difference is theirs got out. You're still in the closet. God can use anybody, no matter of their background, no matter where they came from, if they would just say, yes, Lord. So in this season, and I want to share a few things with you all. God said, tell the people. He said, don't judge nobody by their political view, their gender, their belief, their values, social class, their age, their disability, their religion, their sexuality, their race, their, their uh, I'm not even going to pronounce that, ethnicity. Oh, Y'all smart, you came ready. Their language, their nationality, their beauty, because there's going to be some people God going to use in the season, they're not going to be beautiful on the outside. Watch this, because there's going to be some people that's going to come in the church, they're not going to dress like you, they're not going to smell like you, they just want to be saved without soap and water. Y'all missed that. Don't judge people in this season because God is doing a new thing. God is going to use people you was not expecting him to use. God is going to speak through certain children you was not expecting. See, you thought it was going to come through Johnny, but God is really raising up Philip. But because Philip have an attitude problem right now, Philip have a drug problem right now, you're ignoring it. You, you're just, let me, let me say this, and I'm almost done. I was praying, and the Lord took me in the spirit. And I had a vision, and the Lord said this. He said, tell every parent to repent who has spoke negative about their child. 
Thank you for the two claps. Oh, no, don't clap now. You're just clapping because I said it. You don't know who God put in your womb. You don't know who you're raising. You are raising one of the next greatest leaders, one of the next greatest prophets. And watch this. That's why the enemy is attacking your child, because the enemy knows your child is going to be a threat to the kingdom of darkness. So don't talk about them. Pray about them. Some of y'all got prophets sitting in your living room. Some of y'all got evangelists sitting in your living room. Some of y'all got missionaries and pastors that's going to lead a, a mighty revival. But because you're looking at their condition now. God said, I'm not worried about the drugs they're on. I'm not worried about the relationship they're in. I'm not worried about their lying problem. Is there anything too hard for the God? God said, I made them. I can fix them. I made them. I can fix them. Somebody say, Lord, fix my child. I've been praying, God, I can't handle them. You fix them. You healed them. You delivered them. You set them free. You made them, God. I put them in your hands. Remember Hannah when she prayed? The Bible says after a while she gave her child back to God. That's some of y'all problem. Y'all trying to be God in your child life. Give that sucker, that sucker back to God. I believe somebody need to get radical to where every Sunday you need to come to the altar and get prayer for your child until you see your child, your son, or your daughter walk through that door and say, Lord, I surrender. But I'm telling you, I believe we are in the season where our sons and our daughters, who the enemy have in captive, God is getting ready to set them free. And when you thought it was over, God's going to get their attention. And they're going to come running to the church house. And they're going to outpraise you. They're going to outworship you. Because they're going to say, Mommy and Daddy, when I think about the goodness of Jesus and everything he's done for me, I was blind, but now I see. I was lost, but now I'm found. I believe we're about to see a revival of our children. I said, I believe we're about to see a revival of our children. You ought to praise God for the next 60 seconds for your child coming to God, for your daughter coming to God. They get off of drugs. They come out of the wrong relationship. God said, get ready because I'm getting ready to save your seed. So don't judge them. <laughs> Listen, don't judge them because I'm going to use them. Don't judge them because I'm going to use them. Don't overlook them because I'm going to use them. Don't stop praying for them. I'm going to use them. The third thing, I'm almost done because I'm hot and I'm fat. What we need in this season is a personal experience for a personal testimony. Philip told Nathaniel, he said, first, first Nathaniel told Philip, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Then, watch this. Notice Philip did not try to validate his testimony. He just told Nathaniel, come see for yourself. The reason why some of your children is not responding to God because you're trying to give them church but not Jesus. You would never be committed to God until you have tasted God. Scripture says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is what? Good. And then the next part says, blessed is the man who trusts in him. When I trust in God, I'm committed to God. You cannot commit to God until you experience God. And you know why some of your children don't respond to God in church? Because they see you one way in church, but a different way outside of the church. So why will they want your God when you're hypocritical? Why would they want your God when all they see you do is fuss and bigger and bite at home? What our children need is a move of God. Y'all give y'all. See, I can say y'all because I ain't. See, Sister Pitt taught me when I was younger, Chester, don't say y'all, say we. But I can say y'all because I ain't got no children today. Y'all give y'all children Facebook. 
Y'all get, you sit right in service and the word is going forth and you give your child a cell phone, an iPad, and they're not even watching nothing to do with Jesus. And then you wonder why they're being tormented by the enemy. I want every parent to lay hands on yourself and say, I'm the blame. God can't heal what you won't reveal. If you did not give your child Jesus, and now they're out. See, my parents, you're, and let me say this. Your child is going to make mistakes. But the Bible says if you train them up in the way they should go, when they get old, it will not depart. My parents have put Jesus in us. I did not just see my parents praying at church. I, saw, I told somebody the other day, I said, my parents been married for 4,600.2 years, carried the one. Okay? They're old. They, 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 I, I believe Jesus is the one that officiated their wedding. Because they've been married a long time. And I said, I told the person, I, was, I think we were talking to a couple. I said, out of all the years I've been living, I've never seen my dad raise his voice at my mom. I've never seen my dad raise his hand at my mom. Even if she was being Linda. Praise him or know, praise him or know what I'm talking about. And I'm sitting here scratching my head saying, how in the world do he do it? And I was telling my wife the other day, but God, yeah, amen. I was telling my wife the other day, there was a little thing we was going through. And I told my wife, I put my foot down. I said, you know what? No, we ain't about to do this. Because we're Christians. See, I feel like a lot of times Christians forget when they get married, they're still a child of God. And God expects for you to live holy and righteous and treat your spouse right as she is your brother or your sister. I told Trish before we got married, I said, before you become my wife, you will always be his daughter. And a real father who loves his daughter, if you mess with his daughter, he's going to get you. So I walk in the fear of God because I realize if I do her wrong, he's going to get me. Because he says what you do to the least of mine, you do to me. So I told Trish, I said, wait a minute, no, we're saved. We got the Holy Ghost. We don't have to deal with this. We're going to nip this in the butt and it's not going to happen again. Amen, somebody. Amen. So here it is. Some of our children, and not just our children, young and old, we don't need another church service. We need a move of God. Yeah. Yeah. When you read the text, Nathaniel, after he encountered Jesus, he said, surely you are the son of God. Philip, he'd have to go off of Philip's word. He experienced, remember, remember the revival that happened in Samaria? There was a widow woman Sitting at the well, Jesus comes. They start talking. Jesus starts telling her about all her life. This same woman goes back into the city, and she tells all the men of the city, come see a man who told me everything about my life. Surely he's the Messiah. The people go to see if what she was saying were true. After they encounter Jesus, they come back to her, and they say, we no longer believe that he's the Messiah because of what you said. They said, we have heard him or we have experienced him for ourselves. I'm about to say this, now I'm moving on. This is a season we need to pray for an encounter from heaven. Yeah. I'm not talking about when the music make you feel good. Yeah. I'm not talking about when the preacher make you feel good. I'm talking about when the Holy Ghost get all up in your bones. Yeah. You get drunk. Nobody have to lay hands. The Shekinah glory hits the house. And the young and old leave the house knowing that God has visited us. I believe we are on the edge of seeing that day. Because see, where there's so much pressure happening, the only option we have in America is but a move of God. I don't care who get in office. We still need a move of God. And we need a move of God. It got to start where? In the church. And when I say the church, I ain't talking about the four walls. I'm talking about inside of us. All right, I'm almost done. So we follow Jesus. We don't prejudge. We get a personal testimony. The next thing is this. Nathaniel said to Jesus, 
when, Jesus, when Nathaniel was coming to Jesus, Jesus said, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no deceit. And Nathaniel says to Jesus, How do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I'm not sure why I'm messing up. My mic is just off. So that's something else. I saw you. I want to drop this in somebody's spirit. God knows you and he sees you. God knows you and he sees you. Let me work this real quick. There is somebody sitting among us today to where you feel, you feel like you don't have the answers for tomorrow. And you don't. <laughs> That's the good thing about it. You actually don't. But God said what you're going through right now, it may have took you by surprise. But he said, I knew it was coming before you were born. Because I'm the all-knowing God. God knew your marriage would be where it's at today. God knew the situation with your child would be like it is today. God knew your business would be like it is today. God already knew it. Nothing in your life has taken God by surprise. He said, I just need you to trust me that I know you and I see you. I see the tears you cry when nobody else. See, you come to church and you lift your hands and you make affirmations. God's going to do it and as if you're strong. But see, God sees when you run back home, you tuck your tail between your legs and you scream like a baby because you don't know how you're going to make it the next moment. God said, I see that. God see when you keep praying about your marriage and you're ready to walk out, but God is saying, keep praying, don't let go yet. God sees all that. God sees when the neighbors and the Joneses living well, but you're struggling to paycheck to paycheck, paying your tithes and offering, and still waiting for your financial breakthrough. God sees all that. Nothing takes them by surprise. But I want to drop this in your spirit. God specializes in what seems impossible. He has a master's degree in miracles, y'all. He has a master's degree in turnarounds. He has a master's degree in breakthrough. And if you would just hold on a little while longer, I've come to prophesy over your life that you're getting ready to see something greater than what you've been seeing. I want you by faith real quick just to look at your life. Just, just imagine your life, everything that's going on right now, because I hear this in the spirit. And just now when I was saying that, I, this dropped in my spirit from the Holy Ghost. God said, tell the people, the scenery of your life is getting ready to change. You've been seeing rain. <laughs> You've been seeing dark clouds. The wind been blowing long enough. But get ready for the sunshine. Even in the midst of an economic collapse, while the government is just turned upside down, God said, watch how I'm going to bless your life. Whew. All right, two more things. Are y'all getting anything out of this? The fourth one is this. The necessity of purity. Notice when Nathaniel was coming to Jesus, he said, here is a true Israelite where there is no deceit in. If the heavens are going to open up our life, oh, hear me, hear me, hear me. If the heavens are going to open up our, in, over our life, y'all, God said, tell the people, I must clean their hands and purify their hearts. If you get bitterness, unforgiveness, you, you judging people because of the color of their skin and they don't act like you, they don't live where you are, you're still holding on to what he said, what she said last year, and, and, and you're not loving like Jesus, the heaven's going to stay closed over your life and your, drown gonna stay, your ground is going to stay dry. God, God ain't going to open heaven over your life when your heart is messed up. You don't deserve it. The Bible says, who shall send it to the hills of the Lord? Who shall stand in this holy place, his presence? Only those that what have clean hand and a pure heart. I'm telling you, if you don't get serious about holiness, you're going to miss the move of God in this season. 
Now, let me just take about two minutes because a lot of churches don't preach holiness no more. But I won't stop preaching holiness as God gives me strength. The Bible says, follow peace with all men and holiness, for without which you can't see the Lord. If you think you're going to heaven and you got bad relationship that you won't get right when God has given you the opportunity to get it right, you're not going to go to heaven. God is big on us treating one another right. He is big on us loving one another. Because how do people experience God? Through us. He said, you are the light of the world. And so this is the season the Lord has really been dealing with me about how I'm treating people. There have been people from my past the Lord brought back up and I said, oh, I can't. Oh, here they come. I, I don't know about y'all. Do y'all got that runaway spirit in Walmart? Where you see certain people come in and you take the other aisle? The other day I saw this person. I ran the other aisle. They came around. I said, I see you. I said, oh. I said hey, hey, hey. And my wife, no, I'm good for that. Because, see, I, now, I can run a conversation. But, I don't, but when I see somebody else that can talk, two, two talkers can't get together, y'all. And I try to run the other way, and that person followed me around. And they said, hey, uh, hey. And when I finish the conversation, I ain't going to lie, y'all. I'm being honest because the truth set me free. They were talking the whole time, and the whole time I'm just saying in my head, Lord, I just wish they would hurry up. <laughs> and when I was walking away, the Lord started dealing with my heart. Yes. And the Lord started, you know, Chris, he was breaking me down. He said, you've been running away from this person all the time. But he said, the person looks up to you. The person benefits from your ministry. But you're running away from them. And I, yeah, I, true story. I go, well, Lord, just, just cause them to just shut up a little bit. And this is what the Lord told me. I'm not lying. I was going back to the car. The Lord said, what about when you talk too much? No, no, no. It ain't no amen on that. The Lord said, what about when you talk too much? What about, what about when people be trying to leave the church and you're just so busy talking to them? So I wrote the brother on Facebook. I said, brother, let's go get coffee one of these days. Let me fix where I've been wrong at. But when we get coffee, you better believe I'm going to be ready to talk. We're going to have a good conversation since a bit. But in this season, y'all, and I'm not ashamed to say this, God's been dealing with my heart how I deal with people. Y'all, because I'm, I don't know about y'all, I'm really trying to go to G see Jesus. I'm actually trying to go to heaven. I'm actually trying to have eternal life. And I'm not going to let nobody make me miss and go to hell. So, so the people I can't stand, I just put them at the altar. And I put their name on the altar of prayer, and I say, Lord, help me before I hurt them. Lord, help me. I, I'm, I know I'm going to see them on Sunday. But help me. Because I want to see you. And, and some of y'all look at me like, I can't believe you're talking like that. He's a preacher. Let's not go in your closet, sweetie. Okay? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. All right, let's move on. One more thing, and we're about to pray. So watch this. God tells Nathaniel that you're going to see greater things than these. You, you think you're seeing something now. Just wait till you see what's coming. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither have it entered into the heart of man. Well, God has waiting, but God has something waiting for you in this. Oh, I feel like running right there. God has something waiting that's getting ready to blow your mind. There is an Ephesians 3 and 20 anointing getting ready to be released. What does Ephesians 3 and 20 says? He will do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can ask or think. God is getting ready to blow your mind. Heaven is getting ready to open, y'all. I said heaven is getting ready to open. God is getting ready to send rain to every dry place in your life. So watch this. 
When I was studying this, I was going through the scriptures, and I went from Old and New Testament, and I looked at every place in the scripture where it talked about the heaven open. And there was three things that stuck out to me that the Lord said I'm going to do in this season. Number one is this. Four, sorry. When heaven opened, and I actually prophesied this in January, you're going to see an increase of angelical hosts. That's why you got to be careful how you treat people in this season. Because the Bible says be careful when you treat strangers because you entertain angels unaware. So in this season, you're going to be in the store, you're going to be in your job, you're going to be driving, and you're going to literally see or feel the physical presence of God because an angel is going to manifest itself. The second thing God said, as I was studying the scriptures, when heaven opened, watch this. He said, you see Jesus in the midst of a life-threatening situation. And this comes from Acts chapter 10. I'm sorry, Acts chapter 7, verse 55 through 56. The Bible says when they were stoning Stephen, he looked up towards heaven. He saw heaven open, and Jesus stood at the right hand of God. Many of you have been living the last couple of years having a hard time seeing Jesus in the midst of the situation you're dealing with. But in this season, one of the signs that you know heaven has opened up in your life, you may still be in the situation, but God's going to allow you to see what he's doing for you. He's going to begin to show up. He's going to begin to work things, and you're going to begin to see things from a different perspective. Wow, even though this thing hurt and it's uncomfortable, Jesus is actually in the midst of my storm. He's, he's actually walking on water with me. So the third thing is this. When heaven opens, the kingdom expands. And this is one that I, this is the most exciting one I'm about. This is the one I'm most excited about. I said that all wrong. There we go. Edit that off the tape. Okay, here we go. So Peter was waiting for dinner. And he got so hungry that he fell into a trance. But the Bible says when he fell into it, the heavens opened and he saw a vision. And I don't got time to go into the vision, but the vision was a sign that God was getting ready to expand the kingdom of God. He was about to increase kingdom citizens. One of the signs that you know that heaven has opened over your life, watch this, is when more people start coming to God through your testimony. Don't get caught up on the material blessings in this season. The thing that should excite us the most is when a sinner repents. I believe even within Praise Temple, we are moments away from breaking out of these walls. Because of the mass of people that's getting ready to come. Because heaven is going to open. The glory is going to fall. And watch this. It's not going to take Facebook to promote it. People are going to leave here and say, come see a man that healed me, that delivered me, that told me everything about myself. And when they come, they're going to be hooked. And then the last sign, and we're getting ready to pray. President, get ready, and I want you to flow in the Holy Ghost with me. I don't know what God's going to do, but we believe him to do something. When heaven opens over your life, there become an increase and overflow of blessings. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 28, 1 and 2, in verse 12, it says, Now it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on you and overtake you. Listen, if you will be intentional about obeying God in every area of your life in this season, there won't be no area in your life left unblessed. God is going to bless every nook and cranny in your life. He's going to touch everything. And everything that's connected to you, he's going to bless. Verse 12 says, and the Lord God will open up to you his good treasures. The heavens to give you rain to your land in season. No more dry places. And to bless all the works of your hand. You shall lend to many nations and you shall not borrow. 
Isaiah 55 and 10 says this, For as the rain come down and the snow from heaven, and do not return there, but it waters the earth, and bring forth, forth bud and seed, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so does the word of God do to man. Listen, in this season, God said, as you follow these steps, number one, what is, let me see if y'all smart. What was the first step? Follow Jesus. What was the second one? Preconceive of, you can't misjudge people. Because if you misjudge people, you may misjudge the move of God. Third one. You need to have a personal experience so you can have a personal testimony. Stop trying to give your kids church and give them Jesus. This is why the church must create an atmosphere of intense worship because our young people need to come into a place where it's not just a whole bunch of clapping, but to where God breaks their heart and they come to the altar. I'm praying for that over and over again. Because I'm telling you, when God get a hold of your children, it's going to become easier because you, you won't have to tell your children a lot. God's going to begin to convict them. What was the fourth one? You got to stay holy in this season. Some of y'all, when you leave here, don't go back to what you did last night. Don't text who you should have never been texting last night. Don't look at what you was looking at last night. You got to make up in your mind now that it stops here because I want my blessing. What was the fifth one? You will see greater things. Heaven is getting ready to open. The scenery of your life is getting ready to change. Stand to your feet. If you got something out of this word and God has spoke to your life, I want you to lift both of your hands, close your eyes, and begin to make sweet melody to the Lord with the fruit of your lips. As you worship the Lord with your lips, keep your hands lifted. I want you to think about the principles you learned today. Everything God said. What part spoke to you the most? What part was God dealing with you the most? What part do you need to respond to? Because see, the word has now been given, but now you're about to have an opportunity to respond. Heaven is getting ready to open. Heaven is getting ready to open. You've been waiting long enough. You've been waiting on this thing long enough. It's time. It is time to see a move of God among your children, in your marriage, in your health, in your finances. It's time for you to see what you read in the Bible become a reality in your life. If he did it before, he can do it again. He done miracle signs and wonders. And God is going to prove himself in this season that I am still the God that sits high. But look low. And we're getting ready to have altar call. Listen, there is a lot of us in here today. Spread out over the church. Don't just come to the altar. Find a wall. Find a chair. But you need to move out of your comfort zone. And I want you, we're going to begin to pray and prophesy for the next couple of minutes. I need you to get serious and respond to the word. You need to begin to talk to God. God said it's time. At this time, if you're coming to the altar, come. If you're going to be praying someplace else on the wall, go ahead. We're about to begin to pray and prophesy. Let's find our place. I need you to be serious all over this building. I need you to be 100% serious. Because as you respond to the word, God is going to begin to open up heaven in your life. Don't come looking. Don't come spectating. Come responding. Come responding. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, fear. Hallelujah. Thou Jesus. Here. Come on, you got to respond. Now, I'm not going to lay hands yet. Jesus. I'm you not the Christ. Everything I'm not the Christ. Change. Fall. Yes, God. Fear. Jesus. Thou Glory to God. Here. God want to heal you today. Now, God want to heal your heart. Jesus, you change it. God want to change your situation. Change. Heaven is getting ready to open. Come on, cry out fear. to him. Now. Come on, Jesus. Fear. 
Glory to God. Jesus, you Glory to God. Come on. Come on. You got to respond till he touches you. You got to respond till he touches you. You got to respond till he touches you. Get ready. Heaven is getting ready to open. You're getting ready to get your answer. You're getting ready to get your miracle. Come on. Chains fall. Fear bow here now. Jesus, you change everything. If you're praying for a child, I want you to come to the altar quickly. Everyone, Bishop, can you help me? Hallelujah. If you're praying for a son, a daughter, a nephew, a niece, I want you to come to this altar. Let's get some more. Let's begin to anoint them. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now. Jesus is getting ready to change it. Jesus, you change it. Jesus is getting ready to change it. Change every addiction, fear, every habit, bow, mentally, spiritually, fear, emotionally, now. that the enemy has placed on Jesus, your child. You God is getting ready to break it in this atmosphere. But you got to respond with praise. Tonight. You got to respond with worship. Fear. You got to respond with faith. Jesus, you change everything. Change right. fall fear bow lives are healed. Jesus, you change everything. Change fall fear here now Jesus you change everything lives are healed lives are healed lives are healed Jesus you change everything change for here now Fear, bow, Jesus, you change everything, life, heal, hope, now, fear, bow, Jesus, you change everything, change, fall, fear, bow. The lives are healed. Jesus, you change everything. Chains are falling. Fear is bowing. And lives are healed. Jesus, you change everything. Chains fall. Fear is leaving away. And lives are healed Cause Jesus you change everything And chains are falling And fear it got to move And lives are living Cause Jesus you Great. change Come everything Come Chains fall Fear bow Lives are healed. Jesus, you change everything. Chains fall. Lives are healed. And fear is gone. Jesus, you change everything. Chains fall. Fear must bow here in this place jesus you change everything change fall here now fear must bow jesus you change everything life 
are healed, souls are set free, tears wiped away, cause Jesus you change everything, lives are healed, lives are healed, lives are healed, cause lives are healed, change is coming, change is coming, change is coming, cause Jesus you change everything, chains are healed, and fear it got to move, here in this place, Jesus you change everything, Chains fall, chains fall, chains fall, chains fall. Lives are healed, lives are healed, lives are healed. Cause Jesus, you change everything. Chains fall, fear is gone. Here in this place, Jesus, you change everything. Lives are healed, fear is gone. Here now. Jesus, you change everything. Tears are gone. Fear is gone. Doubt is gone. Because Jesus, you change everything. 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 Chains are falling. Fear is bowing. Here in this place, Jesus, you change everything. Lives are healed. Hearts are healed. Minds are healed. Jesus, you change everything. Chains falling and fear, it got to move. Lives are healed. Jesus, you change everything. 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 Cause chains fall, fear fall here. Jesus, you change everything. Lives are healed, and so much hope is going to be revealed. Yes, in this place, Jesus, you change everything. 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 everything. Life are healed, and chains must fall. Fear must move. Jesus, you change everything. Chains fall. Fear bow. Here now. Jesus, you change everything. 
Lives are healed and minds are healed. Hearts are healed. Families are healed. Yes, Jesus. Bodies are healed. The way we think is healed. Yes, Jesus. Because Jesus, you change everything. 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 Chains fall, fear bow. Here now, Jesus, you change everything. Life are healed, hope is found. Here now. Jesus, you change everything. Chains fall, fear now, here now. Jesus, you change everything. Lives are healed and hope is found here now. Jesus, you change everything. 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 Cause chains are falling. Yes, Jesus. And fear is bowing. Yes, God. And lives are changing. Cause Jesus, you change everything. Marriages are healing. And hearts are healing. Sickness is going away because jesus you change everything 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 Chains fall, fear bow, here now, Jesus you change everything, life are healed and hope is found, here now. Jesus, you change everything. Jesus, you change everything. Jesus, you change everything. Jesus, you change everything. Take a moment and just wait in the presence of the Lord. Close your eyes, lift your hands if you have to. We're almost done. Just wait in the presence of the Lord. Some of you are getting ready to walk out those doors into an open heaven. By the next time we meet on Thursday, you're going to have a testimony 
that I've encountered in open heaven. Before the end of this year, you're going to experience an open heaven. But God said, follow me. Follow my voice. Live holy. Live holy. If it's unclean in your life, get it out. Get it out. And stop, stop misjudging things. You don't know what I'm doing behind the scenes. My ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Take your mouth off of it and put your prayers on it. Can anything good come out of your family? Can anything good come out of your life? Can anything good come out of your children? Can anything good come out of your marriage? Somebody say yes. <laughs> we know the history, but yes. We know the story, but yes. And starting today, you shall see greater things. If God has spoken to you and touched you, give him a praise at this time. Come on, give him a praise. And praise him like he means something to you. Praise him like he means something to you. Thank you, Jesus. You're about to see greater things. And as the altar call was being made and the I look at the message, you are about to see greater things. Then I remember the scripture says that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I'm telling you right now, unless you see the greater in you, I'll say it again, unless you see the greater in you, your, your life not going to change. Your life not going to get better. It's not going to get greater. But the moment you see the greater in you, anybody in here have the greater inside of him. Because the greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I'm not worried about the election. I'm not worried about who gets into the White House. Because I have a greater in me. And guess what? It's going to get greater day by day. I heard somebody said that every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. If you got the greater inside of you, let's give him a great noise in this house. Give him a noise in this house. Let the roof know. Let the walls know that you have greater inside of you you don't have to wait till tomorrow you don't have to wait until next year but the greater exists inside of you right now he is a great one somebody said a great one i'm feeling so excited about the move of god i know that this year has been great <laughs> I know that my life has been great. And the good thing about it, I expect it to get better. <laughs> uh, the rest of this year can only get better. I am so excited about what God is doing in his people. Not what he's going to do, but what he's doing right now in the people of God. Everybody else getting laid off. Bank account is exhausted. But I tell you, for the people of God, nothing has been lost. Nothing has been lost. Nothing has been lost. In fact, we are doing better than we ever done before. Because greater is he that is in us 
than he that is in the world. You trying to elect somebody that don't have greater in them. We're trying. A lady came to the house yesterday, and she said that she was a school teacher. She worked in this place, and she worked on that place. And I said, are you sure you want to get into politics? Because <laughs> these folks seem to forget the greater. I know they talked about them. They talk about God, and they say God is this, and we, we are a United States, and God we trust, but we don't trust in God. Because we don't have the great end. You can't trust in him until you see him. Oh, Jesus, help us. Thank God for that word today. You are about to see greater. I don't know whether the United States knows it or not, but they are about to see greater. Uh, God just holding us right now. He's holding the people of God right now. He's just getting, getting us ready. He's getting us stirred up. He's getting this Holy Ghost inside of us stirred up so we can be that light that sits on a hill. You know what? Light don't mean nothing to light. You said that he went into the darkest city, the worst city. You don't get no brownie points for coming to church and showing your light. You need to start showing God on the outside. Oh, help me, Jesus. God bless you today. May heaven smile upon you. Hope that the word has been a blessing to you. And I, I, I respect the word of God. I depend on the word of God. I live by the word of God. And if you want to get greater, you got to stay in the word of God. Don't expect God to do something for you. And you're not doing for yourselves. You want to get into the word of God. And you want to stay in the word of God. And you want to live by the word of God. Because how much you know about God. Is how much you know about his word. And if you don't know nothing about God's word. He can't help you. But I'm glad for the word. Thank you for the word today. At this time we're moving on. It's time for our offering. Uh, we ask that our finance committee to come and one of the offering today this has been quite a month uh, I don't know uh, I might preach next Sunday I don't know it might be somebody else I, I've been feeling pretty good letting somebody preach all these last four or five Sundays uh, God has been so good he has blessed us to travel over the U.S. into the hot states where the Virus is uh, just high, but he kept us safe and brought us back home one more time. And I was looking at something. I know, I, I know these these masks and being covered up is becoming a problem. Uh, uh, but you know, I cover up because God spiritual not all ways drill with man. When I when I'm into the spirit, I'm not worrying about nothing. But when I go back to the flesh, I'm 67 years old. And they tell me I'm a statistic. <laughs> and on top of that, I'm black. And they tell me it's, we're doing like 45% of the death. So, so when I'm not in the spirit, I put the mask on. I, I, got, to, I got to protect myself because... You walk out here and nothing happened to you, old man like me. I'll croak. And uh, my wife, she's got all kind of problems that she's dealing with. She got to keep the mask on. And, until somebody tell me something different. That this thing is gone away. I'm going to protect myself. Amen. Because... He's not, we're not always in the spirit. And when we're in the spirit, God's going to protect us. But the devil is waiting right, right. In fact, he's waiting on some of you right now. Before you walk out that door, he's going to jump on you. I see it every Sunday morning, every Sunday afternoon. When we say, amen, the devil have a free day. But the day you make him out of a liar. And say, you can't have it. Because I'm greater. Somebody say greater. greater. 
we're ready for our offering today. Those of you are, that are giving, we, you can also give on Give a Fly. Uh, search for Praise Temple, uh, Alaska, and you can give on Give La Fly. Or you can write checks available or payable to Praise Temple. Uh, we accept Benjamins, as many as you want to give. Amen. But be a blessing to the work of God. We're, we're not just here on this hill, but we, we're operating in three different countries with over 200 churches in Africa, India, and Haiti. So this is, this is not just Praise Temple. Praise Temple is all over the world. It's just we have a hard time getting folks that want to live right in Anchorage. People want to come to church, but they don't want to live right. So when you start preaching on life living and holiness, they say, I can do better than that. But let me tell you something. You can't do better without God. And if you walk out here without God, you're going to be in trouble. We're ready. As you stand to your feet, those that are given, many has given already uh, on electronically. But those that are given, we ask that you stand and follow the direction of the ushers.